guys and welcome back to my channel. It has been a hot minute since I filmed a planner video so I am super excited to share today's video with you. I am sharing my bullet journal setup for 2019 and sharing which layouts and yearly pages I choose to include at the beginning of my bullet journal so I am all set up for the year. So if you've been following my channel for a little bit of time you know I used to share a lot more planner content and I kind of slowed down um, sharing that stuff mostly because I pretty much found planner peace and I haven't really changed up my system too much so I don't have as much to share with you guys because I've just been pretty much doing the same stuff using a bullet journal for the last like two years. I don't think I've ever used a single planner system for this long prior to bullet journaling and yeah, I just fell head over heels in love with the system and yeah, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. But you all know that I am still an avid planner lover and so I definitely wanted to share with you um, what has been working for me for so long and hopefully inspire some of you to give bullet journaling a try if you're still trying to find planner piece yourself or if you are already a bullet journaler, maybe inspire you to use some of the layouts that I show um, in my planner today. So to start off with, I use the Karst Stone Paper Notebook and I absolutely love this notebook. This this is the second year that I've used a Karst stone paper notebook as my bullet journal. Um, this obviously is the navy color and last year I used um, their kind of pinky salmon color which I believe is called sand but it's just such high quality and I really like that it is rip and water resistant so I am a lot less concerned about my bullet journal, bullet journal getting damaged by, you know, drinks getting spilled on it or me accidentally tearing a page while erasing or something like that. I just really like um, the durability of these planners, not to mention I just think they are really sleek and nice looking. Alright, and without further ado, let's dive right on into my planner. So in the beginning of my planner, I always have this little Erin Condren um, kind of plastic stencil tracer thing that I just kind of keep tucked in the front. I will just occasionally use these stencils for different bullet journal layouts and since it is so thin it's really easy to just store right in the front of my book. Okay and then turning the page there's a little um, quote from Karst and it says we transform recycled stone into simple functional and beautiful products. Karst slips effortlessly into your lifestyle inspiring you to do more and create more. And like I said I've been using Karst notebooks for two years now and I absolutely love their products and highly recommend them. And then my first layout that I always include is an index and I kind of laugh because this is the one layout that I just kind of always I guess fall behind on and stop caring about because um, I find with most bullet journals except for the I believe they're called Leuchtturm I never know how to say that but you know what I'm talking about if you are in the bullet journal community those come pre-numbered most other dot grid notebooks do not come pre-numbered with page numbers and so you have to kind of number it yourself and honestly I just never really feel like doing it and so I normally don't and so then my index becomes useless. <laughs> so I have decided to kind of simplify things this year and I did start um, listing out a couple of the layouts that I have in here but obviously it's not completely up to date because I have more than just these two pages uh, filled out but I'm just going to try and simplify my index and basically list out all the layouts that I'm going to show you in today's video and then in the future during like my regular yearly planning layouts I'm just going to basically say January 2019 pages, you know, 10 to 15 or whatever it may be instead of literally listing out January monthly page, January week one page, January week two, week two page and just yeah. So I think that will be enough organization in the beginning of the bullet journal in an index to be able to find easily whatever I'm looking for without kind of overwhelming myself with trying to keep up with a super intense index. <laughs> And then turning the page, we are on my 2019 title page. I tried to kind of do a little um, fireworks kind of design around the yearly title page, just kind of for fun. Um, when I'm setting up a new bullet journal, I am always like super motivated to be super artsy and make every page look so perfect. And yeah, so I kind of try and take that motivation that I have in the beginning of each year and have a little fun with it. So yeah, like I said, I chose to do a firework pattern around the year just kind of as a nod to, you know, celebrating New Year's. <laughs> and then on the right hand side of that layout, I have a simple year at a glance where I obviously have written out all the months of the year and the dates that um, fall in those months so that I can easily reference, say I want to find out what day of the week August 13th is on and so I can easily look, it's on a Tuesday. So yeah, I just like having a year at a glance 
at, right at the beginning of my planner that's easy to reference. Moving on, my next page is a uh, important dates layout, and obviously I still haven't filled out my important dates, but I have the layout all ready to go. This page is to record holidays and birthdays, anniversaries, any big reoccurring events that happen um, that I want to obviously have easy access to and remember the dates. I just will fill out in all of these boxes. I have January through December. Each year in my bullet journals, I kind of play around with different styles of the same layouts. So this is the first year that I'm doing kind of a more, you know, square box style. Last year I did kind of a wheel design to um, list out all of my important dates, but yeah, so far I'm really liking this design and I can't wait to get it all filled out and ready for the year. Moving on, I have my 2019 goals page, and as you can see, I don't think I mentioned at the beginning of my video, but I did leave all of the layouts that I made completely blank so that you guys could really get a feel for what the layout looks like, what it's set up, and before it's kind of filled in, I feel like it's easier to, I don't know, see a layout that way and see if you want to include it in your own bullet journal. So yeah, that's why all these layouts are still blank, but obviously once I film this video, I will get them all filled in and I will start using my planner. But anyways, back to my 2019 goals page. I wrote out five different boxes to have um, kind of five different categories of goals for the year. And this is what I like to do instead of resolutions because I feel like resolutions set the expectation that if you don't do it perfectly right from day one of the new year that you have somehow failed. And rather the way I like to do my yearly resolutions or goals is kind of say, hey, by the end of 2019, this is where I would like to be in this specific, you know, category of my life. So, you know, for example, by the end of 2019, I would like to have a good cleaning routine going and yeah, basically regularly stay on top of that. So that's an example of one of my home goals. And I do like splitting up my goals in this way so that I can really kind of dive into each um, area of my life to kind of, you know, make the most of it as I can and, you know, be the best I can be, I guess in each category. So yeah, I really like doing uh, New Year's resolutions that way. On the next page, I have a memorable moments spread. And I started doing this a couple years ago. Um, I would use these spreads monthly. So basically I would have a January memorable moments page, a February memorable moments page. And I found that it was just honestly too much for me to keep up with monthly. And so I wouldn't end up using these spreads. But I really love the idea of having one page where all the really just I don't know, any fun memory or, you know, event or whatever that happens throughout the year or month or what have you, having that all in one place, it just is a really fun spread to look back on. So I knew I didn't want to ditch the idea completely, but I thought that um, kind of just changing it to a yearly memorable, memorable moments page would just be more doable and it would be easier to stay on top of things. So yeah, I'm just really excited to fill this whole page up with fun, exciting, happy memories from 2019. And I just think these pages are so fun to look back on in future years. So any vacations we go on, any big, you know, YouTube milestones I might hit or what have you, will all go on here so I can just kind of look back and see what a wonderful year I had basically. Moving on, the next layout is kind of my future planning layout. So this is for 2019 this year, and this is for 2020 next year. So occasionally I will make plans that are in the future, and with a bullet journal, it is kind of hard to future plan since you basically set it up as you go. So I like to have a page set up where when those future events pop up, I have somewhere to throw it. So for example, this summer we have two weddings that we are planning to attend, and so I would throw, I believe one is in um, June and one's in uh, September, October, one of those. So yeah, I can put down the dates of the weddings here and when I go to plan that month, obviously I won't forget that I have a huge event happening that month. And I just have it already written down somewhere so I don't forget. And same thing for 2020, if we start planning a vacation for that year or if you know there is another wedding or something like that if I make a doctor's appointment or whatever it is, I can just have a page to throw all those future events and yeah, remember them. Okay, and the next layout is another kind of yearly tracking lay or yeah, layout. So um, both of these are obviously for 2019. Um, this page is for tracking my cycle and this page is for tracking something else um, that I wanted a yearly overview of, but I did choose to keep it private. 
So, um, my husband and I, if you have been following my channel, you might already know that we are trying to conceive our first child. So this layout is going to be especially useful to us this year. I usually do with trying to include one of these layouts in my bullet journals just because, I mean, if you're a girl, you know, it's just nice to have somewhere to track that stuff. But yeah, this will be especially useful for my husband and I this year as we try for our first baby. And obviously you don't have to use this type of layout for tracking your cycle. You can basically use it to track anything you would like to have a nice year at a glance overview of. So uh, for example, if you wanted to maybe highlight all of your paydays or if you wanted to, you know, mark when you went on vacations or all your days off of work or, you know, what have you, I really like this layout as a nice way to kind of, um, see a year at a glance for a particular subject. This next layout was a kind of mid-year edition last year that I really liked including in my bullet journal, and so I decided to put it at the beginning of this um, bullet journal this year, and that is an ongoing projects layout. So, I basically have, at any given time, at least a handful of kind of more long-term projects. So, for example, last year I was working on making my own wedding album, and so that was a process that took, you know, well over a couple of months and having a couple of projects like that some of them can kind of get lost in the shuffle if you're not working on them you know on a day-to-day -day basis and so i like to have a list where i can just write out all of my kind of long-term no real deadline or time limit type of projects um so that i a i don't forget them and b whenever i have kind of you know a chunk of time where i don't have any other obligations i can kind of flip to this page and see if there's any of these ongoing projects that I can, you know, work on. So it's just a nice place to track all of my bigger projects. And kind of as a companion page to this layout, I have a more specific detailed tracking graph, I guess, of one of my ongoing projects. So I'm currently working on backing up all of my pictures from my personal hard drives onto Amazon Photos since they do provide an unlimited um, photo storage thing for Prime members and they also don't shrink down the size of your photo because many other free online photo you know organization systems will do that but Amazon keeps the original file size which I really appreciate so anyways I am currently working on uploading all my pictures to Amazon like I said I am caught up through 2013 so now I basically just have 2014 through 2019 and each of these little bars obviously re uh, represent a year, and then each of the boxes within a bar uh, represents a month. So as soon as I have uploaded a month of a specific year onto Amazon, I can go ahead and fill that in so I can kind of have a visual representation of how far I've gone. Also, so I can kind of remember my spot in the process so I can jump right to, you know, June of 2014 whenever I go to upload and I don't have to, you know, relook up where I left off basically. And then we have my cleaning schedule on the next page and this I basically just super simplified for this year. Last, um, my last bullet journal I had a much more kind of complex cleaning schedule designed layout and I ended up making a lot of tweaks to it and so it just ended up kind of looking like a jumbled mess last year. So I figured a just kind of glorified list layout would suffice just fine so that way if I want to make any tweaks or changes it won't be messing up a really pretty hard worked layout. It'll just, you know, I don't know. I just want something to get the job done so I know exactly what I want to do, how often, and I have a reference page for all of my cleaning tasks. And then on this page, this is another layout that I recreated from my bullet journal last time with a little um, tweaks here and there. And this is a place to track all of our finances. So my husband and I recently really got into the YNAB system for budgeting. And with that, we're trying to pay down some of our debts. We have some student loans. We have like, you know, his car loans, some credit cards. And so this is a really nice layout to kind of visually see all of our progress that we make. So I'm going to assign a color to any of the accounts that we want to track. And then um, each month I am going to be able to fill in basically the balance on that account. And so we can see, hopefully, all of our debts start to shrink and all of our assets start to grow and I just think this is a really nice motivating um, finance chart for anyone who is hoping to kind of start budgeting or you know be a little more on top of their finances. Alright I think yeah that finishes up all of the yearly pages in the beginning of my bullet journal so now we can move on to the monthly and weekly layouts that I will basically use for the rest of the year. So 
well, actually, I won't be using the same layouts for the rest of the year. What I've kind of decided to do is take it, you know, one month or one week at a time. So this month, this layout really worked for me. I'm really excited about it. Um, but next month, I might need to track something different. I might just, you know, be more inspired to do maybe like a wheel monthly graph like or monthly um, calendar like I used to do. So my monthly layouts and my weekly layouts may change month to month or week to week, but this is what I started off the year with. So this is January 2019. I have the 1st through the 31st listed out here. And then any events that we have on those days, I will just write in at the corresponding date. I also like to fill in the days of the week next to the date so I can easily see, you know, when the weekends are or, you know, what day of the week a specific date falls on, what have you. And then next to that, I have a our 34-day YNAB challenge. I'm not sure if this is a new thing because, again, we are pretty new to the YNAB community, but um, anyways, this month they are doing, well at the beginning of the year they started a 34 week YNAB challenge on the YNAB blog, and it's just kind of like, I guess a kickstart for the new year to kind of really get into your um, goals and finances and all that fun stuff, so yeah, this is a challenge that I would like to participate in, and so each day as they release the day's challenge, I'm going to write it here, and when I've completed it, I can check it off. And this is what I mean by things will change month to month. Obviously, I don't think that I will include this part of the layout in every month spread because it's, you know, specific to January. But I like that I was able to have the flexibility to include this in my monthly layout because I think it'll be just be a really fun thing for me to track in my bullet journal. And then on this side of things, I have my monthly goals. I do really like setting a couple more specific goals for myself at the beginning of each month, whether that be you know, a number of videos I want to upload on my channel, or I want to tackle organizing a specific room of my house, whatever that may be, I like to just set uh, between maybe three to five to seven-ish goals, um, depending on if, you know, how many things I do want to tackle and how easy or big they are. Um, but yeah, I like having a place to write that down so I can easily reference it. And then at the bottom, I decided to fill in this empty space with a daily habit tracker. Um, I'm going to track things in here like writing in my daily gratitude journal or exercising, um, stuff like that that I obviously want to track and see my progress if it's a daily habit I'm trying to start. Alright, and last layout I have to show you is my weekly layout. So this is the layout that I'm kind of most in flex with and I think I'm actually definitely going to change up for next week. Um, I was thinking this I was going to use as kind of a flex space for notes or adding in any, um, different lists or trackers or whatever that I want in my weekly layout, but I think I'm actually going to be able to just combine all that I have here into one page and have my weekly um, planner pages be on one page instead of taking up a full two-page layout, which I think will just be really nice. So over here, uh, I saw this little design on Pinterest and I thought it was really cute. It says it's week number two of the year and that is January 7th through 13th. And then these boxes are the days of the week. <laughs> I accidentally completely messed up while writing out the little titles, and so I did Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then when I realized that this is supposed to be Saturday, not Friday, I realized my mistake. So I just went ahead and plopped Friday down there and whatever, called it good. So yeah, these are the boxes where I'm gonna put any um, plans or events or appointments or whatever that we have, as well as any day-specific tasks I want to complete. And then down here I have two to-do lists. Um, these will go down to the end of the page if I need it, but for now I just kind of pre-filled in a couple of bubbles. So on the left here is my to-do list for this week, so things I would like to get done. And then this is going to be my to-do list for the next week, which is another new thing that I'm adding to my bullet journal this year. Um, I haven't previously done it, but I think it'll be a really good um, section to have. So. Basically, if I think of something that I need to do next week, I have a place to write it down, or at the end of the week, if there's any tasks that I didn't finish up this week, I can go ahead and migrate it to right here, so that when I'm planning out next week, I just have one single place that I can look to to transfer over all of those incomplete tasks. And that finishes up my 2019 bullet journal setup. I hope you really enjoyed getting a peek at the layouts I chose to put into the beginning of my bullet journal, and I hope you found it helpful, got some ideas for your bullet journal, or got inspired to maybe start a bullet journal. 
And yeah, let me know if you like these planner videos or if there's any other specific planner videos that you would like to see. Like I said, my system doesn't change up all that often, but I am always open to making planner videos. So if there's something specific you would like to see from me, please let me know and I will definitely get to film that. Other than that, I think that's all for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed and give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.